Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at some uh, simple image processing tasks in OpenCV using Python. For that, you need to import, install, and then import CV2. And here we need NumPy because we are dealing with uh, matrices and arrays, and you'll see when I use it. And then I need one operation from SciPy for rotation of image, so I need to import that one as well. But the main thing is CV2 and most of the time also NumPy. So the first task that you might uh, consider is, of course, reading an existing image. So here I have an image in the same folder as this Py, uh, dot .py file, this, uh, py, uh, this Python file, and then... I use the cv2.imread. This imread is exactly the same command that you have in MATLAB, right? But you don't have it naturally in Python. You have to install uh, OpenCV or Open Computer Vision to uh, be able to do that. But once you do, you have this method under cv2. You see use that operator. You pass the full address of the image here. Since they are in the same folder, I just passed the name of the image. And then I have the second argument, which is 1 or 0. If it's 1, you can load the color image. If it's 0, you can uh, read the image in uh, basically grayscale. And then you can use the command I am show to what? To show the image, right? And you can pass a title for that window. So I can say image original. And then this image, which is the matrix that is read into this variable IMG, okay? So let's first go ahead and look at the image, Res basically read it in and uh, show it. And then we're going to look at the other task. So here we go. Right now we are reading the famous image Lena, uh, that pink, uh, as a color image. So this is the image read as color. And as I said here, if I go ahead and read the image with a second argument of zero, then it is going to be already converted into grayscale for me, as you can see here. Okay, so that's the first thing you can do. Now, here you have this command wait key, which is basically like not doing anything, like pausing until some key is pressed. And when the key is pressed, the control is passed to the next command. Right here, after it, there is no command. But if I go ahead and add this command here for destroying all windows, this is like close all command in MATLAB, which is going to close all open windows. So here it's called destroy all windows. So what I do here is I show the image, I wait until I press a key on the keyboard, and then it is automatically going to close the image without me clicking on the close button look here so i bring it in and then i don't need to click on this any key on the keyboard that i click that image is going to what go away because this command is going to run okay so this is what this is so far the very basic reading an image and showing an image now the next uh, next task that we are going to look at is basically what is the size of an image? Well, image is a matrix, so we can use the command shape, dot shape, right? The method dot shape. And that is going to show me the size of the image, which is the number of horizontal and vertical pixels and the number of channels. So uh, let me go ahead and run this part. So uh, let me show you this part here. So this is what? This is the size of the image. This image is 489 vertical versus 372 horizontal, and it has three channels. So the first number is always number of rows. The second is number of columns, just like an image. The next thing is uh, the important difference between OpenCV and MATLAB is in MATLAB, the channels are RGB. First channel is red, second is green, third one is blue. In OpenCV, it's the exact opposite. It's BGR. So your images are not RGB images. It's kind of like BGR images. The first channel is blue. The second is green. The third one is red. So here, let's say I want to know what is the value of red, green, and blue in pixel 50 and 50. So I go to pixel 50 and 50, and then I say, give me the image value at 50 and 50. And I don't need to provide any third number. Just provide the location. 
and the output you're going to assign it to three variables b g and r as i said the order is b g and r and then if you want you can show those values so here i'm saying hey at this location r is 184 g is 72 and b is 81 so it's most dominantly red and if you look at this image i assume you can see that probably here at 50 and 50 is most dominantly red. So it is making complete sense. Now, if you want to know the value at the specific channel, what you need to do is to add the third number. So here I say at uh, row 10, column 10, and 2. And you might say, well, you want to know the red channel. Red channel is the third channel. Why are you using 2? But remember, yes, we have what? We have indexing starting from zero, right? It's Python. So two is what? Is the third channel really? Zero is the first channel, right? So if I say zero, is that going to pick on me? Of course not. What channel is that going to be? It's BGR, so it's going to be the blue channel, right? So if I run it one more time, then that value that is going to show for me is going to be what? It is going to be the blue channel at that location, right? And then 2 is going to be what? As I said, the third channel and 1 is going to be what? The first. So if you say 3, guess what? You are going to get an error, right? Hey, give me channel 3. It says, hey, your dimensions don't match. This is not MATLAB. Sorry, this is Python. You see here? says index 3 is out of bounds so keep in mind we are working in python so this number should be 2 for the third channel and there are two ways as i said you can do it either you can use the, to deal with the image like a simple matrix or uh, there is this command called item dot item this method dot item so if you say give me image dot item 10 10 and 2 that's the same as giving me image 10 10 and 2 in brackets that's the same thing. You can get the number, and if you want to set up the number, I mean, change the value of that channel, you can either say image.item set at 10, 10, and 2 is 100. So change the red channel at that location to 100, or simply say image at that location is equal to 100. Of course, this is easier, and this is what? Easier, but there is this method called item and item set. Just wanted you to let uh, wanted to let you know. Now, can I change more than a simple pixel or more than a simple uh, location? Of course. So, what am I doing here? I'm saying go ahead, and from row 300 to 349, and from column 0 to 49, and then I do not provide any third numbers, which means all of the channels. Set them to 000. What does that mean? 000 means black means make this square which is like 50 by 50 make that a square all black so if you look here this is my original image and if i uh, click here i should get my what uh, let me run it again because i had this error so let me run it one more time so look here you see in this location 300 to 350 or 349 and then uh, 0 to 49 in this location Go ahead and make it all black if i wanted to i could say make it all white right so if i say make it 255 you know the numbers go from 0 to 255 they are u int 8. so if i say go from 255 to 255 then it should make that whole area what of course white right so let me show you that one as well you see so you can use the combination of rgbn or bgr in this case and make any color that you want so this is the image, this is the modified image as you can see, and then it is waiting for me to press any key so it closes both of these windows for me. So all I need to do is to click on one of the keys and you see they are gone, right? So this is accessing what? This is accessing the image size, finding the values at a specific location, changing specific values, specific channels, changing a whole block or anything for that matter. These are very basics, good? Now, what else? The next thing I want to show you is basic image transformations like rotation, translation, resizing, cropping, uh, flipping, skew, all sorts of things that you can do to an image, all of those geometrical transformations, right? 
So let's take a look at this one here. So what commands do I have? So one of the most common uh, and uh, complete uh, transformations that I can do is the affine transformation, which is found under uh, CV2. So I say CV2.warp affine. So warp it using an affine transformation where the image is the image that I read. T is my transformation matrix, affine transformation matrix, which is a two by three matrix. And then the final size that I want you to give me back is what? Is image shape one and image shape zero, which is what? The number of, of course, what? Uh, columns and the number of rows. So basically here I'm saying that I want the transform image to be the same size as the original image. Okay. And based on what I choose for T, I can get all sorts of effects. Now, how do I create this T using the NumPy float32? So all of the numbers are float because these numbers can have decimals. Float32, and then it's under NumPy, right? It's a matrix. And you see that the first row is 0 0.6010, the second row is 0 0.6 and 5. Now, I have a video uh, specifically under, uh, it should be under playlist MATLAB called, uh, or uh, let me check, under math, engineering math, called affine transformations. Yeah, it is under engineering mathematics, and if you go down, you can see that right here, it says linear transformations, affine transformations, projections, rotation matrix, similarity transform. So I have explained everything about affine transformations in this video, okay, the theoretical. So I'm not going to talk about the theory part of it, but... Um, you know that this element here in the last column and this element, these two, are the amount of translations, right? So this is the number of rows and columns that the image is going to move to the left, right, up and down. And the first two numbers in the first row and the, sec the first two numbers in the second row, they form a two by two matrix, which can do different things. If it's a diagonal matrix like right now, these diagonal numbers are going to do resizing or rescaling, right? So if the number is bigger than one, you're going to make the image bigger. If it's less than one like now, you're going to make it smaller. The off diagonal elements, if you just use one of them or two of them and they are not related, like they are not equal or negative of each other, then you will have something called skew. And if you make this uh, two by two portion of this matrix to be like a rotation matrix, then you can do rotations. Okay, so here, if you want, what I can do is I go ahead and uh, show you all sorts of transformations here. And for a moment, let me uh, comment out the parts other than the affine. So we can only focus on the affine transformation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And we don't need this part. So let's go ahead and look what we get, right? So here we go. You see, this is the original image. And if you look, now what do I have? This is the same size as the original image, but clearly it's uh, 0.6 compared to the original image in terms of size. It's 60% of the size. As you can see, uh, here I have a, a small band that is all black and something here that is because this image has moved 10 pixel in the horizontal direction and then 5 pixels in the vertical direction and those are given by these two numbers 10 and 5 and there is no what there is no rotation there is no skew right so now what I'll do for you is I add some skew so I say hey go ahead and add some skew look what happens You see, now it is skewed clearly horizontally. Now, maybe 0.8 is too much. Let me make it smaller so we can see the skew better. Okay, so uh, here, you see, it is skewed in this horizontal direction, right? This, this corner is skewed because this number is changed. Now, if I change this number back to zero and instead change this guy, 
Now it is going to be vertically skewed. Look here. You see? Now the vertical direction, you have this shear effect. Okay? And you can have both of them if you change both of them. Right? So I can have a little bit different number in horizontal and a little bit different vertical. And I'm going to have shear effect in both directions, like you can see right now. Okay, so this is called a skew. Now, if you choose these numbers so that it's like cosine theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, and cosine theta, then it is going to be a pure rotation matrix. And for that, since I need the math, uh, or I can use the sine and cosine from NumPy, so I can say, for example, I want n pi cosine of, and then what I need is basically, uh, I need the num pi, uh, I need the math pi, correct? And then I need to, let's, let's choose an angle. Let's say, for example, I want to rotate it 45 degrees, huh? So for that, I can use the uh, math library. And then here I can say, uh, math.pi and then divided by 4, right? So that is going to be what? That is going to be cosine of 45. And then this guy should be negative of sine 45. And then I should go to the other one. Let me use a backslash and go to the next line. This one should be sine. And then this one should be cosine. Right, that's a rotation matrix. So now it should rotate 45 degrees plus some ex small uh, translations. Or you know what? Let me uh, remove the translations. Just make it pure rotation. So now let's see what happens. You see, now it has rotated 45 degrees. And of course, a portion of it is out of the image. But you clearly can see this 45 degree angle rotation here. Okay, so this is what, this is the affine transformation. Let me make the angle smaller so you can see better. So let's say over 30 degrees, so it's just uh, over 30, so it's like 6 degrees or so. You can see that rotation better here. Right, you clearly can see that 6 degrees here. And clearly the image is not scaled or anything. If I want, I can multiply both of these cosines by the same number, like for example, 1.5, and now I have a scaling as well as rotation at the same time, right? So look here. You see, it's rotated and also scaled for one and a half times. So this is all of the things that you can do using what? Using the affine method. The other things you can do if you just want pure rotation, then there is this method called rotate under ND image, which you can bring in from SciPy, and that is going to rotate the image, and all you need to pass to it is the angle in degrees. You don't need an affine warp, and you don't need to define any matrix or something. Okay, so this is going to be what? This is going to be a uh, relatively uh, fast and nice command, I would say. So I can show you that one. If you want to crop the image, then all you need to do is to just grab a portion of the image. So here I'm saying grab the image for me from row 50 to 300 and from column 0 to 200, right? That's as simple as it gets for cropping. If you want to resize the image, I showed you how to do it with an affine, but if you just want to uh, resize alone, there is also this method called CB2 resize. You pass to it the image. You pass to it the target size, and then you have to pass to it an interpolation method, okay? So there are all sorts of different interpolation algorithms that you have here is called the inter-area. There are other methods too. There are cubic. There are all sorts of interpolation methods, so you can choose whichever one that you want. And the results are not, of course, going to be the same. Many times the cubic is good. This inter-area is also relatively good. And uh, this is going to what? Resize the image for me. And finally, if you want to fillip the image, then there is the method cv2.fillip. And here you have to pass to it what? A second index, a second number. Now, if that number is 1, it is going to be filliped horizontally. 
So with respect to a vertical line, it is going to go from this side to that side, kind of like. If you pass a zero to it, it's going to be flipped vertically. If you get negative one, it's going to be flipped in both directions, both horizontal and vertical, right? So uh, let's go ahead and run it. So here we go. And you see that's the original image. And then uh, this is the resized image to 300 by 300. Then we have the uh, cropped image, which is only the top left corner of the image. This is the image flipped horizontally, and then this is the rotated image. And as you can see, the difference between this rotation and the rotation from the affine is, this one is going to resize the frame of the image so it contains all of the pixels, and then pads all of the remaining areas that have no information for them. It's going to pad them with zeros, make them black. But the affine one, you're going to lose a portion of the image. So I personally prefer this one over the fine one if I just want to do uh, basically the affine transformation. Okay. But you can see all other methods I showed you. If you want to do the resize of the affine, there is a method for it. If you want to fill it, which is not in this, you can, although you can do fill it if you want to, you can do mirror, uh, but not with a simple affine one. And then, um, if you want to crop, you don't even need a command for that and so on and so forth. So, and then as I told you, if you change this number, you can make it fill it vertically or in both directions. The last thing I want to show you is adding annotations. So this time we are going to what? We are going to see annotations, which is like adding what? For example, adding a... Um, line add a line to image in MATLAB you can do that or add a circle or add a rectangle right and then finally once you're done doing anything with the image i want to show you the i am right command which is going to write the image to an external file okay so here we're going to read the image then we can add different things to it the first one is a line so here i'm saying cv2 line add a line to the image and here you are Ill altering the image by the way when you are doing cv2 line here you are what altering the original image okay so what are you doing you are going from pixel 00, 00 the top left corner to pixel 200 200 and the color of the line is channel bgr this is blue 255 red and green are zero so the line color is going to be blue the next thing you are doing on the top of that image that has a line, now you add a rectangle, which goes from the top left corner of 50-50 to the bottom right corner of 200-200. And the color is zero for blue and then full color for red and green. And you know when you combine red and green, then the color is going to be yellow. So it's going to be a yellow rectangle and you can add an extra argument here, three, which is the... Uh, basically the line width the size of the rectangle okay so if i say three here that means three pixels wide if instead of three five ten or something i say negative one it is going to make it a solid rectangle it is going to make it completely filled rectangle and then i have the circle command which i pass in the image then inside parentheses, I pass it the uh, X and Y of the center. And here you see the X is the number of uh, columns, right? Uh, divided by two and then the floor of that division. You know, the double division is floor division. And then the number of uh, rows, right? Divided by two floor divisions. So this is the center of the image. So go to the center of the image. Then the radius of the circle is 50 units, and then the color is white, right? Because all channels are full. And then whatever you did to that image, give it a new name, call it Lena Messed Up Ping, and then save this image to that external file. Save this modified image to that external file using what I am right. So let's go ahead and run this part. So if I go ahead and run it, this is the image. And this is that external file, lina.mess.ping, which as you can see, this is your blue line from that corner to this point. 
In blue, this is your yellow rectangle with three pixels wide. And this is that white circle at the center of what image, right? So now if I change that and say, hey, negative one, it is going to make it what? It is going to make it a uh, filled rectangle. And then here, let's say I want to make that um, circle green. So I go ahead and change this to green. And then I can add to the thickness of the line. So this is three pixels and so on. And if I go ahead and run this and don't get an error, which we didn't, then I'm not showing you the image. I'm writing the image to that file. So let me show you the file. So it's going to overwrite the previous one, which you can see over here. And of course, guess what? When I did the line first and then I wrote that rectangle, that rectangle overwrote the rest of the line. So you don't see anything. Right. That's why I didn't fill it. So you can see the rest of the blue line through the rectangle. And then I have the green circle with one thick uh, uh, one pixel thickness. OK, so here we go. This is what we had for uh, this lecture. And then here I made that rectangle not um, completely solid again. And I added some thickness. So this is my final result, as you can see. So hopefully you learned how to read and write images, how to capture different uh, pixel values, different channels values, how to transform the image geometrically and do all sorts of simple transformations on the image using OpenCV Python. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you in my next lecture.